whenever you talk about creation, it's amazing. So anyway, will you all welcome Dr. Thomas Kendall to come up. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Pastor Anthony. I asked for a few minutes to begin with to, uh, to recite a poem that God had given me recently. I wanted to encourage people to do what Jesus admonished us to do, and that is to always pray and never faint. And remember that we live in a nation that has always stood under the providence of God. Many times we have been at the brink of losing our freedom, and yet God in his grace and his providence has seen us through. By all rights, we never should have run, won the Revolutionary War. By all rights, we should have lost the War of 1812. And very likely, we could have been a divided nation at the time of the Civil War. And although a lot of people don't realize it, we could have easily lost World War II. So many times, God has brought us through dark and foreboding times, and yet he's allowed things to, to be humanly impossible to deal with. And yet, because we've called upon him, in faith and in you know trust he has seen us through the darkest of times so i was hoping that i would encourage people to to pray not faint to believe that god can still do the miracles that he has done in the past and so i wrote this poem it's called our our battle scarred flag and it's there to remind us of all the providence god has brought us through and that he can indeed bring us through again he's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the God who's seen us through in the past, and he will, I believe, see us through in the future. So without any further ado, our battle-scarred flag. I was hoisting up the stars and stripes on my flagpole one fine day when I saw a young man approaching me. I could tell he had something to say. He said, your old flag is ragged and dirty. Why, it's just a disgrace. Why don't you buy a brand new flag? and put that up in its place. I said, young man, won't you please take a seat and listen for just a spell? Because when people ask the question that you just asked, well, there's a story I love to tell. You know, I'm not the kind of man who likes to brag, but I hold the highest esteem for that battle-scarred flag. Yes, she's ripped and dirty and full of holes, but those are scars of honor, you see for she was wounded many times as she fought for liberty. You see, she got that bullet hole right there after Washington carried her across the Delaware. She got that great big rip at the Battle of New Orleans, where once again the British redcoats were tearing at her seams. And she got that burn mark from a rocket the night that Francis Scott Key was inspired to write, oh, say can you see. In the Civil War, our flag proved that her strength was real when she was slashed by a sword at the Battle of Chancellorsville. Then she was pierced by a bayonet on top of the Gettysburg Hill. But she stood up to Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, and General Bragg. Oh, but oh, the south wind blew hard on our battle-weary flag. Our flag was carried in that war by men who died so slaves could be free. So it's a lie when they try to tell you that she's the flag of a racist country. Our flag stood gracious and forgiving when North and South were once more bound. Now, in one nation, under God, yes, that is where she is found. At Bellow Wood in World War I, she got that great big hole from a German gun. She got muddy in the trenches, it sure wasn't fun, but she rallied our troops until the great war was won. Our flag suffered the sting of several defeats early on in World War II, so she had to hang limp and low until her strength she could renew. But she came back strong on D-Day when she invaded the European shore. She came to confront Hitler's tyranny. She came to settle the score. Our flag advanced with our troops on that fateful day, though Normandy's beach had turned blood red, but she brought freedom back to Europe, where they had feared that freedom was dead. Our flag stood resolute throughout that war. They could not make her retire. Her enemies could never make her give up, despite their withering fire. 
From the beginning, at Pearl Harbor, until the Japanese Empire's final doom, our flag inspired our troops daily. She had them singing a victorious tune, until they kicked those Axis tyrants right into their tomb. Our flag stood up for freedom again, in Korea, in Vietnam, and she gave courage to our troops who fought in Iraq and Afghanistan. Our flag draped respectfully over the coffins where our dead warriors had been laid. She embraced them with honor one last time for the sacrifice they had made. Our flag waves high upon our mighty ships as they sail on the ocean's foam. Yet she's way too disrespected right back here at home. Sadly, here in her native land, she's been spat upon and abused. She's been stomped on, vilified, burned up, and refused. And the government for which she stands is now scandalized throughout the land. Yes, she's been stabbed in the back by traitors from within, by a government swamp that stole our votes. So how can we ever win? Yet our freedom can prevail through a strategy that our founding fathers knew so well. The prayer to the God of America can defeat the powers of hell. The God of our fathers has saved America more than once before. So let us pray that beneath this flag, he'll grant us victory yet once more. Young man, you asked why I raised this tattered flag with her wounds so plain to see, because I want all Americans to never forget that freedom isn't free. Was not even Jesus required to pay a terrible price to secure our freedom? eternally? And did it not leave scars in his hands and feet as a memorial we shall evermore see? That's why I proudly hoist this battle-scarred flag up high every morning. I take her slowly down every night. I never let her touch the ground, and I fold her up just right. Then I hold her close to my grateful heart as I caress her with my hands, and I pray that tyranny will never destroy the freedom for which she stands. Well, young man, on second thought, I guess I really do like to brag, because I'm so proud that God placed me beneath that glorious flag. Would you all please stand with me as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please do remember to pray daily for our nation. 